One day, the earth shook and rumbled. Houses and buildings collapsed. People got stuck in the rubble. They couldn't even phone or be phoned because the telephone poles had collapsed as well. Luckily, help came quickly. A swarm of rescue robots and drones, searching for people in the rubble with cameras. But how do they transfer all those images? Separate radio links with the home base aren't powerful enough to send all that data at once. This is why the drones form an ad hoc network, an instant internet of sorts that can be used to send the data in several steps, hopping from node to node until it reaches the home base. Ad hoc networks are ideal for emergency situations. You don't have to provide any additional infrastructure. Plus, the network changes along with the shape of the swarm. If one member moves out of reach of a neighbor, the links are automatically reconfigured. That is to say, of course you have to code that into the member units, and these need to have at least some reception for the network to be completely joined. The question is, how much? What range do you need for guaranteed coverage? Suppose all drones are at random positions, and all have the same range. What are the chances that a signal can be passed on from one end of the network to the other side? That depends. Naturally, the chance of a full coverage is larger when the range is larger. But this dependence doesn't work the way you might expect. When the range increases, the chances of full coverage don't grow proportionally. Instead, there is a tipping point. When you start with a low range, increasing range doesn't do much in the beginning. The signal doesn't come through because there's no link between both sides of the network. But here is the tipping point. When the range passes this critical value, the chances of full coverage increase dramatically, almost instantly. Ad hoc networks are finding more and more applications in rescue operations, between soldiers, as part of the Internet of Things, or on the highway, when cars of the future start to communicate with each other. When designing these networks, these tipping points are very important. They are critical thresholds, or phase shifts, very frequent phenomena in all kinds of systems. They can also be found when heated water starts to boil, or in train schedules. A network of train links can be loaded more and more heavily, without any signs of stress. Trains keep rolling. But when a critical threshold is passed, suddenly a phase shift appears, and problems escalate quickly. Network theory allows us to understand this critical threshold, and where you can expect to reach it. That is something you want in an ad hoc wireless network, but something to be avoided at all costs when you're operating a train network.